In this video, and perhaps in a few follow-up videos, I'm going to talk about optimal transport theory. This is a subject which has a long history. It goes back to the late 1700s. And recently, during the last 30 years or so, it has found many applications in pure and applied mathematics as well as statistics. I'm not going to talk so much about these applications. Um, instead, I'm going to focus on the basic theory of optimal transport. And hopefully that could be valuable to, to you, uh, regardless of what field you're from. So I've written down two sentences here uh, describing what optimal transport is. On the one hand, uh, it's how to build a sandcastle, uh, put differently. Uh, it is how to transport probability measures. So I have uh, I've a drawing down here with one pile of sand to the left here. Um, this pile of sand, I'm going to call it the source. Uh, and I'm going to get let x be this uh, space we're on. And I'm going to model my source by a probability measure mu on x. And then we have a sand castle to the right, or an idea of a sand castle, which we want to build. This I'm going to call the target. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to model it with the probability measure new on x as well. And in order to build this, we're going to have to decide, but we're going to have to move all the sand from left to right. We're going to, for each point over here, I'm going to have to decide where I want to move the sand in this point. So for, perhaps I want to move it over here to y. And when I do that, there's going to be a cost associated to that. So perhaps this is a, the cost is a function of the distance between x and y. Perhaps it's something else. But anyway, it's going to be a function taking two variables, x and y, one in the support of mu and one in the support of mu. Uh, so if I, if I would continue the second sentence up here, I would say that it is uh, optimal transport is concerned with how to transport probability measures in the most cost-effective way. Uh, to make this a bit more precise, I'm going to first have to talk about push forwards of measures. Okay. And the usual setting uh, for optimal transport is given by Polish basis. So a Polish space is a space which is separable. Um, and which admits a complete metric. So a good example to keep in mind here is to just put, um, think of X and Y as yes, Rn. So this is both an interesting case in its own, and it also serves as a model case for the rest of the theory. So we're going to have two uh, uh, Polish spaces, and mu is going to be a probability measure on X, and the um, uh, we have a map from x to y, which is measurable. So in fact, here you don't need your spaces to be Polish spaces. You just need them to be measure spaces. So um, yeah, topological spaces with the Borel sigma algebra. Then we can define a push forward of mu. Um, with respect to t, which is going to be a measure in, then it's not going to be a measure on x anymore, but it's going to be a measure on y. And it is defined by uh, it's the measure which uh, assigns to each a, uh, a measurable set a and x, 
in y sorry the the value of mu of the inverse image of a Equivalently, uh, we have the following relation. So, if I want to, if I have a function, a continuous bounded function g on y, and I want to integrate this with respect to this push forward measure, then this is the same as just integrating the composition of g with t um, with respect to mu on x. So push forward, of, push forward of measures is the adjoint of uh, pullback of functions. So this should be true for all function G, continuous and bounded on Y. I'm gonna go through a couple of examples of what push forward means just to, it's important to see them to get a feel for it. So first of all, uh, there are really two examples here which are important and who are kind of opposite to each other. The first one is the discrete, discrete case. So we have a, our measure is gonna be a sum of direct measures. So we just fix a number of points in X and a number of coefficients. So positive real numbers such that the sum of these coefficients is one. Uh, and then we're going to put say that our mu is the sum of direct masses. So what then is the push forward of u? So it has a really simple formula. Take the same sum, but it, instead of putting our direct masses at xi, we put them at the image of x i on the t. So push forward means you're really taking all the points in the support of your source measure and moving them to points in the support of the target measure. Um, other example, which is the continuous or smooth case, uh, looks rather differently, but I think taking together these kind of these two examples describes what's happening. So here I'm going to let X and Y be Rn. And then my mu is going to be in absolutely continuous dense measure with a smooth, sorry, with the smooth density. And I'm also going to assume that my map T is smooth. And my map T is going to be injected as well. Then pretty easy to compute uh, a formula for how the density of my mu changes under push forward. So if I wanna integrate the function against this push forward measure, then by definition, this is the same as the integral of the composition with respect to mu, which if we write this out a bit more carefully, this is g of t of x, times f of x, and then we're just integrating that with respect to the vague measure in x. Now, to this, since everything is smooth, we can apply change of variables formula. I just put y equals t of x. That means we're now integrating over t of x and in y instead of this x. Uh, and we're integrating g of y, uh, and against the density. So here I need to put in T inverse of Y. Uh, and then we get these determinant of the Jacobian coming out from the, uh, this change of variables is associated to a deformation of the volume, which is described by the determinant of the Jacobian. They take the derivative of T and its determinant. Um, and I also take the absolute value of this. Then 
and then I integrate this in y. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that it actually gives us a formula for the density, the push forward measure. So my y here is still the Lebesgue measure, just integrating another variable. And what I got here is the density of the push forward of me. So what it does is that it, um, it uh, pulls back uh, the density of f with respect to the inverse of t. And then it adds this factor, which uh, encodes the volume deformation of your map. When we have this, we are ready to formulate what the original version of the optimal transport problem is. And this is due to Gaspard Munch. And it's, as I said, this goes back to the late 1700s. So here we're going to let, as before, we have two Polish spaces. And here it's reasonable to think about this as just Rn. And then the standard cost function is given by us, uh, which is good to keep in mind, is given by us taking the distance squared dividing by two. Uh, of course, we will consider, you can do this for any cost function uh, and a, common a, a very common restriction to do is to restrict to cost functions who are either bounded from below or who are actually bounded from below by zero. Uh, and continues. Uh, and we pick a source measure on X and we pick a target measure on Y. So given this data, Munch Monsch's problem of optimal transport uh, is to minimize a certain total cost, which we get by taking the cost of x and t of x, so basically the cost of moving the point x to its image t of x. And we integrate this over mu. And this, we want to minimize this over all measurable maps t from x to y, which pushes forward the source to the target. Now, um, most uh, applications of this comes in one way or another from the fact that using this optimization problem here uh, and using the optimal look, especially focusing on the optimal value, um, we get a distance, we get a way of measuring distance between probability measures, or if you like, uh, a metric on probability measures. So, Uh, on the on the other hand, to um, to sort of use this in any meaningful way, we we will need to know some kind of qualitative aspects of this. We, for example, we would like to know um, if there is always a minimizer, uh, if this minimizer is unique, and if it, this minimizer is characterized by any properties. So typical questions you want to ask when you see this is uh, existence and uniqueness of minimizers. Uh, and also qualitative. 
properties. Minimizers. Uh, when you do this, there are uh, a few challenges which, which we can actually see straight away. So let me write them. Let, actually, let me not switch page. Let me just write them up here in red. So challenges. Uh, as an optimization problem, this is actually quite scary. Uh, this does not look good uh, at first glance. First of all, C of T, the cost function, is very nonlinear. So this quantity is nonlinear in T. Uh, secondly, typically when you're, when you're dealing with an optimization problem, it's good to have uh, some kind of convexity properties of the space you're optimizing over, the space you're minimizing over. Um, so here, this is the space of uh, measurable maps, which uh, pushes forward mu to nu. So this is, uh, as much as you can talk about this, this, this is not, not convex. So for example, if you if you look at x and y, if you, if you put x and y to be Rm, uh, then there is a way of linearly inter interpolating maps, but uh, and this space then is not convex with respect to that linear structure. Uh, moreover, and perhaps more importantly, is that this space does not have any good compactness properties. Really, it's quite easy to come up with examples of sequences of um, of maps who are admissible in this sense, they push forward mu to nu for some probability minuses mu and nu, but it's very hard to make sense of any limit uh, and sort of make sense of it as an as an as a new absolute, as a new admissible map. So this is uh, not compact, sort of regardless of which topology you put on it, you will not it will be very hard to find something meaningful, a meaningful compactness property. So in the next video here, a follow up with you, I'm going to talk about Kantorovich problem of optimal transports, which is really as a slight uh, reformulation, or it's really, it's a relaxation of this problem. Um, and it, in one stroke, it uh, solves all of these three challenges we got here.